Hey guys, and long time no see. Um, as you have seen maybe on my channel, I've not been doing videos for nearly a year now. Um, but with the upcoming changes to Heroes of the Storm, which are the stealth changes, um, changes to laning and everything, I uh, got some more motivation to do some content again. Um, up until then, uh, I mean, the PTR is only coming out on the 20th of November, so we have some time to kill. And I wanted to start and see um, what new formats uh, we can do and... Um, up until then, we can also do some hero guides because, you know, that's fun and all. Um, yeah, and other than that, um, let's jump right into this week's hero. We're going to talk about Leoric, and I want to uh, start right away with saying that uh, I'm only playing this hero because uh, Nunia, one of the uh, German grandmasters, um, gave me the tip to do that in my league, in my Diamond Adventures. Um, but I've actually found um, quite a good amount of games with him, uh, and I'm actually pretty su successful with him as well. But most importantly, he's pretty fun um, to play, I think, at the moment. So, uh, he's a melee warrior, as you can see. He's from uh, the Diablo universe. And um, if you know everything about Diablo, uh, sorry, about uh, Leoric and his playstyle and everything, you just want to go into the gameplay, you can jump ahead and click on the annotation um, that I put here, and you jump into the replay commentary for that. Um, I will now talk a little bit about a skit about his win rates um, and why he's, uh, I think, a pretty strong hero on some maps. Uh, and actually a decent hero probably on all maps, so um, we're going to go into that a little bit and then talk about the gameplay. So uh, he has um, his QWE, which are um, Skeletal Swing, which is his main wave clear um, and also damage tool actually to heroes. Um, very strong uh, ability. W is Drain Hope, um, which is um, basically sucking the hope out of enemies. And then E, one of the um, abilities that we will focus most on uh, during the gameplay, uh, is a Wraith Walker. All of them are pretty uh, short cooldown and will be enhanced by talents throughout the game. Pass. And then he has two heroics, obviously, uh, Entomb and uh, March of the Black King. Uh, at the moment, March of the Black King is considered to be better. And then his trait, um, if you die, you will want to run as a ghost. You don't uh, die and go back into the Halls of Storm. But you can uh, shorten your trip to um, revive by just using your... Uh, abilities and heal up a little bit. Okay, let's jump over to Hotlocks. At the moment, Leoric is one of the mid-tier uh, heroes, I want to say, on, on uh, Hotlocks, so he's here, right here. Um, we're going to go up a little bit, so you can see a lot of heroes are um, above him, but there's also quite a bit of heroes be below him, so he's pretty much in the middle of the pack. Uh, currently, 49% um, win rate, uh, and he's picked quite a bit, and banned actually only very little. Um, as you can see, he has been improving over the last couple of weeks, um, which is good for him. Let's have a deeper look into the talents. We uh, only look at Master and Diamond games um, to make the win rates uh, a little bit more representative. And also we only look at the last seven days, which means um, that all the changes to other heroes are in and we don't have to uh, worry about anything that is uh, weird at the moment. So, tier one, um, I'm going to talk about the talents that I'm going to take. Uh, Consume Vitality is the most picked talent by far. Um, also has the highest win rate in this tier. Um, Skeletal Swing heals when you hit enemies, uh, enemy heroes, sorry, which is very important, especially late game, because you will uh, basically try to hit everybody um, who's close to you. Uh, this makes it very easy to uh, heal up uh, and not uh, only depend on your Drain Hope it's, as it's a skill shot that can be very quite, uh, very difficult sometimes. So, level 4, uh, you can see all of the win rates are actually pretty good and pretty close. Um, Ghastly Reach is actually uh, picked the most. Um, it's increasing the uh, range of Skeletal Swing. I'm going for Neil Peasants because uh, the way that we're going to play Leoric is basically as a solo laner um, and uh, somebody who's bullying the lane. Uh, as you can see, it's not picked as much, um, but has a very similar win rate actually. Level 7, all of the talents are actually very good, I think. Uh, you can pick and choose uh, and definitely make a de decision determining on on your heroes uh, that you're playing against. Uh, the healing can be improved, um, which can be helpful against um, other lane bullies, like Zagara, for example, um, can be helpful. Um, the movement speed from Dreamhold actually has the highest win rate, um, but you can also see it's only picked very in a very few games, so um, that might be a little bit skewed. And then Hopelessness is what we're going for. It increases the range, um, which makes you, again, um, more bullying against other heroes because you basically can stay in contact with them for much longer. And Tomb got nerfed. Um, so basically, um, building a wall around your enemy heroes um, is not as strong anymore. Um, also, a lot of heroes have mobility items or ability 
uh, just plane abilities that can um, get them out of there. So it's not as good. That being said, if you are fighting against a team that doesn't have lots of mobility, um, Entomb is still very strong. Uh, but it, you have to, you know, pick it in accordance with your enemy heroes. March of the Black King is also what we're going to take. Uh, you basically march forward, hit with your huge uh, hammer, and uh, you know, get some some uh, health back, which is always good. So now we're going to get to the uh, juicy um, part of the talents. Um, on level 13 and level 16, you're going to go with your Wraith Walk um, talents. On level 13, uh, with the second highest win rate, you're going to go with Ominous Wraith. Um, Ominous Wraith will be basically um, making sure that you uh, not only help your team uh, with tanking a little bit of damage or uh, trying to heal and do damage to others, but also making sure that the enemy damage dealers don't do as much damage against your uh, team. We're going to go that uh, deeper into that in just a second in the gameplay. So I'm with Wrath for the build that we're playing is um, definitely must pick. Um, Unhealing your despair um, is also very good, um, but it might be a little bit, uh, you know, like as in a position where you want to always reduce drain hope, but it costs a lot of mana and also um, you have to hit it. It has to be very consistent that you hit your um, spell. So not always the best uh, choice. And then Hardened Bones, um, armor is also very strong. As you can see, the pick, uh, the pick and win rate are, are pretty okay. Uh, has the highest win rate. Um, armor is, again, really strong in the game. So, uh, level 16 is the most important uh, talent for uh, for us. Royal Focus will empower Skeletal Swing and the Wraith Walk. So, what it does is it reduces the cooldown by each enemy hero you hit. Um, as we will see in this replay, um, it's going to be very important to reduce your um, Wraith Walk cooldown to always minimize the damage the enemy team is doing. So, this is going to be important, and it's the must pick um, on level 16 for this build. As you can see, Crushing Hope, um, bonus damage, and the Empower Wrath of the Bone King, um, which is basically auto attacks, I think. Um, both are um, good win rates. As you can see, Leoric scales well into late game. Um, all of his talents have more than 55% win rate. Um, very strong. Level 20, you can basically pick and choose. Um, all of them are pretty good. Um, I like Burning Despair the most. Uh, it gives you especially more wave clear on um, some maps. But Spectral Reach can also be very good because you uh, basically have another uh, way to heal yourself. And Shroud of the Dead King, the protected status is pretty good, but as you can see, it's not picked very often. Um, you don't soak that much damage um, and you don't need that much protection uh, because you're already healing yourself um, by quite a bit. So um, nobody likes it, nobody picks it. That's just how it is. Okay, before we go to the game, um, one last look at Leoric on MasterLeague.net. Um, oh yeah, the page before was hotslogs.com if you don't know. Um, you can see a lot of um, the win rates and everything. That being said, be careful with that, um, as uh, Hotslocks uh, has suffered a lot um, and doesn't get as many replays as before, so um, the numbers might be a little bit skewed. But to get an overview of what's strong and what's not so strong, um, it's still pretty good. So Master League, we're going to look at Leoric um, just before we go and jump into the game. Basically, you can see him picked in the HTC Finals that happened at BlizzCon. Um, he was picked in 10 out of 66 matches, uh, and he had actually a pretty good win rate of 75%, won 6 of his 8 games. So, uh, what I wanted to show you here is basically, uh, he has been played on Tomb of the Spider Queen, Towers of Doom, Infernal Shrines, Dragonshire, and then it's repeating itself a little bit. Um, so in all maps on HTC, he has been picked, and um, while he lost on Infernal Shrines here, he won on Infernal Shrines here. So he is pretty good. Um, on this map. Tumor's Badwin is a map that he's especially good, and we're going to look at the map um, because that's where we played. But generally speaking, the small maps uh, where grouping up happens a lot, um, especially early, but also late, is very important um, because it um, it just helps Leoric and what he does. Um, with that said, you can see also that he's been picked by a lot of different teams. Um, the Korean teams picked him, European teams picked him, um, NA teams picked him uh, as well, I think. Let me check. Yeah, he had, uh, and Team Freedom won. Uh, sorry, Team Freedom picked him as well. So with that, you can see um, he is very popular uh, in certain situations. And with that, we're gonna jump into the game and um, make sure that we are explaining everything what's going on there. So it's Tomb of Spider Win again. Um, I played this in Hero League um, quite recently. Also, uh, I'm playing around a little bit with the height um, on the replays. Let me know in the comments um, what you like. I'm probably going to go with this height so it gives me a little bit of time to um, show a little bit of the other things that are happening around the map but also allows me to uh, just shows me show where I clicked and what I did in my lane. 
So again, Hero League game. Um, we're going to speed this up a little bit so that we go get into the lanes. As you can see, our Muradin was AFK at the beginning and it uh, got him a little bit of pings. So, Leoric, we want to play him as a solo laner with the build that we're going for. Again, uh, we went for Consumer Vitality in the first uh, talent here. And we want to win our lane, we want to bully in our lane and we want to make sure that we can get as much XP but also um, as much pressure as we can into the enemy lanes. So as you can see, nobody of the enemy team is there. I have to be a little bit careful. Now I see that top, they're rotating there and trying to kill um, Lunara, which also happens. So now I'm going back. Um, I could try to get mid Soak as well because nobody will be here in time to meet the wave. That being said, we have Vala and um, Lucio here, so I'm not really sure that I should be here. Um, and I hope that my team will be here before the first minion dies. I'm just hiding here, and I'm, that's what I'm expecting as well. Um, Sonia is going to fight against me. I miss my um, my Drain Hope here on her. Um, and you will see that uh, she doesn't play that well against me, but I still have a um, lot of pressure against her uh, just by playing uh, to the strength of Lyrix. His auto attacks, um, since the last patch he got buffs, um, are now splitting. So basically the first two are cleave attacks and the third attack um, is a uh, critical hit. So what you want to do is use two melee attacks against the wave and then use the crit attack against her. Um, I didn't do that very well this game because I was focused more on um, not getting ganked. Nice try to gank from my teammates. And as you can see, whenever I hit a hero um, with my Q, it basically reduces the cooldown and refunds mana. So um, when you clear waves, you always try to also um, hit enemy heroes so that you get the cooldown reduction and only have a seven second cooldown instead of 14 seconds. Again, trying to clear the wave, hit both the wave and the hero, really important. So we're level 4 um, and I'm exactly doing what I want to do. Um, if you look at the stats, um, I do have a little bit of hero damage but that's just because Sonia is here. Um, but I'm soaking the most experience which is what I want to do um, in my lane. This is just her trying to find me. Important that I dodge the Q. Um, in these lanes when you play uh, with Leoric, um, it's important that you uh, try to dodge as many skill shots of the enemy as possible because while you have some healing, um, you don't want to use your mana exclusively for healing. So now Morales is here. Um, I still feel comfortable with um, the amount of spells that I have. That being said, I miss uh, my W and then, uh, then I go back. I tap here um, just to be topped up. And now that I have two people here in the lane, I'm going to play a little bit more defensively. Um, while Leoric can resurrect himself, uh, he doesn't uh, give less experience to um, the enemy team. So if you're playing with him, uh, you shouldn't feed many deaths to the enemy team um, because it's just XP, free XP to the uh, enemy. As you can see with the short range um, of Drain Hope, it's difficult to stay um, with Sonya. So I try to um, drain her a little bit. Um, it will be getting better with level 7 for me. Again, we're playing solo lane. So what we want to do is we want to get as much ammo out of these towers as possible. Another time we queue up and hit her while we're tr also trying to clear the wave, um, which will allow me to have another swing up. And now I'm just using my auto attacks to actually clear the wave. She um, cleverly positioned herself, so I wasn't able to queue twice, except now was the second queue, which means her, my wave clear is a little bit more slow than hers. I'm just going to pay my gems because we already have 15 in, um, and I have the possibility to pay here without any pressure from Sonia or from the rest of the team, so that's really good. This is a mistake on her side, like she she's queuing in um, with her spear into the enemy, uh, sorry, in, her, in the enemy minions here from me. Um, but that allows me to just clear her minions and never be afraid of her. Like I don't have to be afraid of her ever because she basically never queues into me. So I rarely lose health. This trade what I'm doing now is pretty bad because I don't have um, Drain Hope up. I don't have my Q up. So therefore um, I'm basically looking uh, at a negative trade here. And I have still 22 seconds cooldown on my well. This is great positioning by her. Um, I can't hit my skeletal swing uh, which means well, on her, which means I don't have the reduced cooldown. This on the other hand was not very good um, by her. Um, that being said, I also have hopelessness now, so my drain hope is increased. This is a trade that I'm willing to do because I have still well. Um, I still can hit her with my Q and 
It gives a little bit of pressure towards her. Also, they're fighting in the middle, so I want to make sure that she's not um, joining into the fight. Now she has a problem because I just queued her and now I'm pretty much um, bringing her down. If she doesn't have uh, well, she has to go back now. And as you can see, even though Sonya is a pretty um, big lane bully, I'm winning the lane. Um, not by much. Uh, as you can see, the ammo is refilling right now. But it's still pretty good. Now my team is even paying, which is really good. Um, and I'm making a little mistake here in a second um, because I just clear the wave now. And I see that my team is um, gathering in the middle, so I'm thinking, hey, maybe it's a good idea to queue up with them um, and do some damage to the mid. Because she's fighting here, um, I do create a power play here, but now we lose a hero, and basically I'm just gonna go here and um, get some damage in my face. I hate a good rain hope on them, but realistically I'm not gonna do a lot here. Um, I don't have the talent set to reduce their damage, so I'm deciding to also go back down. Um, and didn't bring me anything. Um, I actually lost quite a bit on my um, on my spider, and I'm probably not gonna get a lot of out of it. That being said, um, my gray man is doing a well, very well, uh, a very good job um, joining in and helping me. Good ping. Uh, we're a little bit out of position. That being said, with Wraithwalk, I never feel too much pressure because I can't be stunned, and at the moment they don't have. Um, the burst damage to kill me. So I can be a little bit more offensive here uh, and try to be um, aggressive. I'm both walking here, um, trying to find um, basically an um, entrance to, on the, to the fight, but it doesn't work. And now we're pretty much out of position and we should be careful because we don't see anybody else on the map. Um, Vala is now mid and what happens is that they're gonna pay, which is a little bit bad for us. I'm too far back here. Um, I don't like what I'm doing. Uh, I should be uh, trying to get more damage um, onto Sonya so that they can't um, just hit our Rhaegar that much. That being said, we're uh, so close before level 10 that I didn't want to fight uh, until now. But it worked out. Um, the Medic is actually getting um, the gems here, so we want to chase a little bit more. I hit the Drain Hope, which um, helps the killer. But now I'm pretty much out of mana. Um, I have one Wraith Walk, but that's pretty much it. So as you can see, um, in this case, my teammate helped me a lot to win this lane now. Um, it's open um, and I'm actually not losing anything of my uh, of my wall. It's actually st still completely full. So I'm gonna help clear mid and top. And as you can see, the skeletal swing is incredibly powerful, especially with Neil Peasants. Um, it does 100% uh, more damage against merc mercenaries, minions and monsters, so the spiders um, counter that as well which means um, we do a lot of damage uh, and clear them very quickly. Here you can see already a little bit of what um, Leoric is doing. Um, I'm basically trying to be uh, out of the way now, but I can't do it. But um, before that, I basically am a zoning tool. I'm jumping into enemy heroes, I'm trying to zone them out a little bit, um, try to do damage against everybody, and with my Q I get pretty much um, self healed to uh, quite a big extent if I hit um, so many heroes, so I'm normally not afraid to jump into them. Also, because I'm not resurrecting in the um, s uh, Hall of Storms, I'm coming back here now and we have basically a 5 versus 5 um, with the enemy being drained on life. Unfortunately for me, the Sonya is doing a really good job and she has uh, she's going to continue with that um, throughout the game. So I die again because I'm not um, careful enough. Look at it, I'm getting a lot of damage, but Sonya is on top of it. Um, I get the most damage from Vala, so I'm actually not even um, aware of that. Uh, so I just get focused down by her uh, attacks. This is one of the reasons why you want to have um, Ominous Wraith uh, on 13. Because it just gives you so much potential to um, neglect damage uh, or deny damage from them. That Lyoric just gets into a no whole other level. So. Let's have a short pause and have a look on the on the sets. I'm still highest in XP. Um, Vala is also doing a good job. She has more um, siege damage than me, but um, my goal is to have high siege damage and high XP, and at the moment it's working. So now both teams had a pay-in, and they're a little bit ahead of us in XP. This is something that you don't have to be afraid of as Loric uh, with the build that I'm having, because you basically have your Q up very often. And you heal enormous amount um, in these situations. 
which is why he's so popular uh, on especially on Tomb of the Spider Queen because you basically um, have these clumped up fights from time to time when the enemy team wants to move in or when you try to uh, basically um, pay. Here I didn't pay enough attention. I should be uh, should have wraith, wraith walked into here so that I take the shots from the uh, the tower. But uh, you can't win all of the fights. So again, um, doing a lot of damage. Um, if you saw by that, I'm still in the middle of the pack. I'm still doing more damage than the other tanks. Obviously, with they have two supporters, um, which means um, they won't do as much damage. But I'm also rivaling um, Sonia, who's uh, doing a great job uh, later on. So this is one of the things, you just clear waves so damn quick that you uh, want to do it while um, your enemy team is doing something else. So you've seen the Wraith walk in here, um, and this is happening because of Omnus Wraith. Um, so again, increase uh, the duration by 100%, so you have much more time in Wraith walk, um, which is important because you can basically um, put yourself into a safe position and then Wraith walk into the enemy team. And enemy heroes that come in contact with the Wraith deal 50% less damage for 4 seconds. So what I just did here is basically I hit all of the enemies um, and now they're doing 50% less damage. Especially against, uh, especially for a Vala, that's a lot of damage it's missing. And now I'm just waiting out. Um, don't want to fight here. Uh, we have the Web Weavers coming, so we don't want to necessarily go in. I still have the 14 second cooldown uh, on it, so it's not as strong at the moment. Um, this will happen later on when I have um, Royal uh, Focus, that I will also be able to uh, do this a lot. Um, which in terms makes it very difficult for my enemy team uh, to actually get the damage out that they want. Clearing Wraith again, they also already cleared the, the Weaver. And now I'm looking here, I have 5 enemies, I'm just going to Wraith in. So. Whenever the enemy team is already um, engaging into your team, it's the time for you to Wraith walk. Um, in earlier games that I played with Leoric, I oftentimes made the mistake to be the person that Wraiths in right away to engage the fight. That's something that you don't want to do. Uh, Leoric is basically the counter-engagement into an enemy team that either has been engaged by your team already, or that is engaging into your team. You can't uh, fight here, they um, went back to their fort, so I'm going to go back to the thing that I'm doing best, which is clearing waves. And with my wave clearing in the bottom, you can also see that my web weaver actually went quite far. Again, pause it here. You can see here, uh, three enemies here, two enemies here, and all of them will be hit by my wraith walk. So with that, um, I'm reducing the damage of the enemy team by quite a bit. I'm also in their backline now, doing a lot of damage. I'm getting off like a pretty good march of the Black King. The thing is, um, their Sonya is actually um, doing much more damage to our backline, which means we're losing the fight. As you can see, Rega, Lunara, both are pretty low. Again, I'm Wraith walking through the enemy team. The Ancest becomes a little bit surprising for me because I'm out of the fight uh, and I didn't want to join back in. Um, and I'm trying to be on the supporter side here now because the Sonya is just doing so much damage to us. While we take her out, we nearly lose our gems here, and um, I'm not doing uh, anything, either um, using the damage or helping my team. So it's one of the things that you have to learn with um, Leoric, where uh, is when is the time to engage uh, and when is to run away. Here I'm trying to get my Muradin to be able to um, teleport back, but it doesn't work. That being said, we have a two-level lead now, which is very positive for us, um, and we have Royal Focus. So now uh, Wraithwalk is increased. Um, well, sorry, it increases the damage of my next Q, which means I hit even harder and I can uh, clear waves even quicker. And then each enemy hit by the swing uh, reduces the cooldown of Wraith Walk. So um, I want to Wraith Walk through um, everybody, hit them with the, th the swing, so I have less cooldown on the walk, which is really important. This is also a good setup. Um, the swing uh, allows us to slow, slow uh, Sonya once, and then um, the poison does the rest. Which is why um, on uh, level four, the ghostly reach, uh, sorry, the ghastly reach is also very um, popular. Again, I'm going into the enemy team, and I'm hitting everybody uh, to make uh, to do uh, less damage on their side. Use the Q on Sonia, um, got reduced um, cooldown on Wraithwalk, so it's ready again. So now we're just paying and I'm gonna uh, go around and do uh, what I do best, as I said, um, wave clearing and making sure that we're punishing them. 
Armudin wanted to go in here, um, which is actually kind of smart because they're doing it. Uh, they're doing the, the night camp. But we were not in position to do it. And also, um, they're pretty close to 16. Uh, so it's a little bit dangerous to go into a narrow uh, fight here. This is pretty perfect for me. Um, they engaged into us. Um, so I can Wraith Walk basically right away. Unfortunately, uh, sorry, fortunately I hit the Q on a couple of them, which means I have another Wraith Walk up right away. Again, all of them have less damage, and this is exactly how you want to play it. Wraith Walk, into them, you Q, you have another Wraith Walk up, again Wraith Walk, and we're actually killing all of them. Except Morales, who got away somehow. So now is the situation that actually uh, will cost us the game a little bit and we're going to pause it real quick um, to have a little bit of analysis outside of Leoric and more on the game. So we're going to actually um, remove the vision from our team. So we only have uh, Morales, which also makes a mistake by welling and then teleporting back. You shouldn't do this. Um, but we have a situation that all of them are down for more than 25 seconds, except, you know, these two. But it's like above 20 seconds. Let's put it this way. So Lunara, um, as she told us later in chat, wants to push a keep. So she thinks that the winning condition that we could uh, have is opening the keep and then later on have a push to the core. We still have a fort in the middle, which is a little bit unfortunate because um, we don't have full web web pressure even if we pay. We also have a night camp that's pushing out, which means that the web web push will be um, basically defended by this, um, which makes it not as strong. And then bottom lane is also pushing in. So all of the web viewers um, and middle and bottom would be spawning behind. And only the top ones are spawning pretty much in front. That being said, as you can see on the minimap, we're pinging boss and we're pinging pay. We have only seven uh, gems missing. So Mojo and SEM, the Rega and the Muradin can pay right away. And I'm pinging boss because they're down for so long that we can theoretically do boss and pay at the same time. With this, we have a very strong push in the top with the boss and the web weavers, which means we're going to get keep. So we will get Lunara's wish, um, but we also negate a little bit that we're not going to have very strong pushes in mid and bottom. Unfortunately, um, our team decides to do nothing of that. Um, and I start boss a little bit because I'm, uh, I'm worried that they're going to pay. So I'm aggroing the boss. And he hits like a truck against me. I'm not having a lot of health. Um, I'm not uh, fully healed, and I can't uh, get any health back from this one. So for some reason, these guys are clearing the camp instead of paying first. So they're paying now, um, and as you can see, the enemy team is respawning. We're still super far, far ahead. I get the Ancestral, which also isn't the best thing to do right now. But now you're seeing three enemies, four enemies are coming already towards us. So we have to give up this uh, this fight. Lunara is also low. I'm Wraith walking in, which is good, but they already get Lunara right away. I have to use my abilities just to stay alive. Still, again, reducing enemy damage by how much I can. And they're clumping a lot, which makes it a lot easier for me. But the issue is that our weapon push will not do a lot of damage now. So mid push is not happening top push will be defended by them in a second. Bottom push, as said, is far away from the keep wall. And even though the keep is pretty low, it will not do a lot of damage. I'm now putting myself into a bad position and actually die here as well, which is completely useless. Um, I thought that at that time that I could maybe delay them to go back, but realistically I just fed them a lot of experience, um, which, you know, it wasn't necessary. At this point we're chatting now uh, about what should have done and what we should not have done. Um, which obviously is wrong in a hero league game, but realistically uh, my call to do boss and then pay or pay uh, while doing boss uh, would definitely have been the strongest possibility uh, to win the game right there and then. The one thing that we have is we still have an level advantage and it doesn't look like they will be able to get uh, a lot of XP out of the rest of the minion waves. So, uh, while they will uh, get a little bit closer, they won't be um, getting level 20 from this earlier than we do. So now we're at late, late game Leoric, uh, which means you're basically a living ward uh, when you're dead. And your job now is to just try to make the enemy team do as little damage as possible. 
So we're going to pause it right here. So I'm here now stunned uh, from the apocalypse uh, and everybody's running away, which is good. Uh, we don't want to fight anymore. Uh, obviously, Sonia already has been going ham against our backline again, which um, is my mistake as well as Muradin's. Muradin is at the moment just jumping into the enemy, um, trying to always make um, them uh, focus in so that he can basically um, do what Sonia is doing to our backline. Unfortunately, as you can see, both of our tanks top here are going ham on the backline of the enemy, while Sonia is basically one on three winning the fights for them. Oh, not winning the fights as I can see here. Um, we actually uh, get quite a bit of advantage from this fight. But as, what I mean is that you still have to be careful. Um, obviously, with Leoric, with this build, your job is to make sure that you uh, reduce the damage of the enemy team. And again, we're not uh, happy about what we're doing, so we're gonna ping uh, the boss now. Lunara still wants to do something else, but that's how it is. Um, to come back to the point, uh, yeah, late game Leoric, you do want to reduce the damage of the enemy team for sure, but you also don't want to forget that um, the enemy team might have um, some advantage over your backline, so you have to be careful uh, where you spend your mana and also where you spend your focus on. Uh, throughout the next couple of minutes, uh, the enemy team is coming back, and most of it is because I don't um, take any care of Sonya um, and just follow uh, Muradin. Uh, while it's correct to follow your tank when he's uh, engaging, because uh, that's what, you know, their job is. Uh, we're not doing a good job to protect our backline. So we have a boss now, uh, and I again um, want to engage once they're engaged. Uh, or I want to be in a safe position, like here, and make sure that they do less damage. The reduced damage is actually very important, because you basically uh, also stop them from doing a lot of damage against the boss. Again, Sonya is in our backline. I'm somewhere here in front, not doing anything. Um, now my aura Murden is going back. And with a little bit of luck, we're actually doing a lot of damage here. But again, Sonia, Sonia, and I'm here doing damage against their backline. What I should be doing is focusing Sonia, because she doesn't have um, enough um, life-saving tools yet that she can win it. But I'm so focused on doing a good job with Wraithwalk and reducing the damage of Vala that I'm actually not taking good care of my backline. I'm gonna die here. So now we just lost a boss fight. Uh, sorry, a, a fight with the boss on the on the keep and uh, storm talents against no storm uh, against no storm talents. So um, that just shows you that you really have to be careful late game uh, with Leoric what you're doing because you have uh, one job at the beginning of the game which is soaking XP and making sure that your lane is won or at least not lost. But then once you hit 13, your main job should be to reduce damage. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you only have to do it with Wraithwalk. You can also do it by slowing the Sonya, by doing damage to her, um, not allowing her to go uh, wild on your backline. I'm teleporting back here, I'm hearthstoning back to the base because I don't want to be in a situation where they can gank me with five people. While uh, Wraithwalk allows me to uh, get out pretty easily, you will have situations where you either press it too late or um, they still have enough damage to kill you while you're in Wraithwalk, so uh, it's a safe bet to go back here. Um, I've died four times now, uh, so Quite a bit of XP went to the enemy there, but it's not the end of the world. This is a good Wraith Walk. I'm in a safe position, just scouting if they're coming here. Um, they're clearly not here, they want to pay uh, what they have, um, but they're uh, basically one gem uh, missing. Now they have enough. But that's important, like if you have a safe position you can Wraith Walk in, uh, nothing can happen to you, but you can get still get vision, and um, uh, with Royal Focus you have uh, a good chance to not only um, hit somebody then afterwards, but also reduce the cooldown, even if you get into a bad position. So you should be able to uh, then basically um, uh, be able to escape. This is a perfect setup for us. Actually, we should get on the Diablo here, but we're not doing a good job. We're split, which is very difficult. I'm still happy to fight because this is exactly what I want. Um, I'm, I'm able to um, march here soon. Still Wraith walking, which is the correct situation now. But now again, I'm not focusing on the Sonya. She now has Heart and Shield, or Ignore Pain is what her level 20 is called. And I'm still trying to fight front of here. Uh, and Sonya just kills both of our um, DDs. Now we finally kill her. 
but everybody dies, including me. And it's kind of a bit of a, a pickle for us. Also losing a lot of gems here. Um, we're all dead, so it's it's very difficult. Uh, and I'm just not doing a good job of uh, actually listening to my team. Uh, because like they say, like, oh, Moradin should be doing it, and they're you know somewhat right. If he doesn't jump in, um, we might not be in the position. That being said, if he doesn't jump in, it might also be that um, they can just be uh, much freer with the damage because they don't have any pressure from anybody. Luckily for us, their team uh, has to push out the catapults on top. Um, the core already has taken damage, as you can see, 63%. Um, um, so our fa fight wasn't for nothing. Um, that being said, it obviously would have been better if we um, didn't die there. So now it's a close game. Um, they're a little bit up in XP, but... Uh, this late in the game, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. They trade a keep for us. And I'm not very worried about um, uh, resurrecting here. I see Diablo in the middle, so it is clear that they won't be uh, coming from me and trying to kill me. So, what now? We're in the position that um, the Sonya is always killing our backline, and our Murian is always jumping into the into their backline. So what I'm going to do in the next couple of fights is I'm going to try to focus on the Sonya, try to reduce her damage, and also make sure that we will not uh, lose our backline right away. I'm clearing the wave, but now I'm coming in. Wraith walking in. Again, not doing my job, but now I'm like, oh damn it, the Sonya is, doing ha is going ham again. So now we're completely split. Um, I'm reducing the damage of Sonya. Now I'm going in because I'm also worried that... Um, our Murder will die, and our Rega does the mistake that he comes back with very low health. At the moment I'm not afraid to die, so I Wraith walk through them, um, just for the possibility to um, eventually not uh, let them pay, but uh, it doesn't work out, they're too clumped up and they have too much health. This on the other hand, really good, we're doing a lot more damage again to their core, uh, they have to defend it. Also, all three lanes are kind of pushed out, even the catapult lane still is only on the fort, which means we're going to be easily able to defend all of this. And this is where um, my wave is again very important. You can see the, the web weaver dies pretty quickly. Also, as you can see, with the unstoppable that you have from Wraithwalk and the um, increased duration, it's very easy to um, run away. I'm teleporting back here uh, to get full health and mana. Uh, as I don't have well anymore, it's the best way to get um, full again. Also, Muradin is dead, so I don't see us fighting anytime soon. Again, I'm in a safe position. They can't do a lot of damage to me. I'm just gonna Wraith walk in to do damage to them. Armuradin jumps in again. Uh, but actually, this time it works very well because it uh, makes them go away and we can easily clear the mid wet weaver. They're posturing here, um, but this is my job now. Uh, I should be clearing the wave. Um, I didn't take... Uh, I have to actually look up the name. I didn't take Burning Despair for the extra wave clear. Um, I went for uh, for the Spectral Leech to get more healing out of it. When watching the replay the first time, I, w I, I was like, mm, maybe that's not the, the best situation. Because during Wraithwalk you don't actually uh, use your automatic attacks, so um, the heal is not that big uh, coming from it. But that being said, once both items are in cooldown, um, you can still uh, try to heal a little bit. My team was a little worried that they would be doing boss, but there's no chance that they could actually. Um, they are, should be very worried about us doing the, the boss, but they themselves um, while they have quite a bit of boss clear, it's also very dangerous against us because we have so much AoE um, with the cocktails, the poison and uh, and my skeletal swings that it's uh, super dangerous for them to be out of position. So I'm paying my 21 gems because I just want to get rid of them. I lost 20 already and I think I lost uh, more even before, so I'm just going to pay that. And this again, this is exactly what you can do with the Wraith Walk. You get vision, you already do... Uh, reduce damage to everybody and I still have it up like again because I hit people with my Q I have the uh, Wraith walk up again good ancestral 
and we're just killing everybody now. Again, we're not super focused on the Sonia, but now I'm pinging uh, to go on her um, because this will basically seal the deal. Um, we now this time had a better engagement. Uh, again, their positioning here was pretty bad because they shouldn't be uh, in those close encounters. We're winning, we're killing everybody, only Diablo respawns and I'm telling the team to go kill the core. It's late game, we're 27 minutes in, um, there's no way that a solo Diablo will be able to stop us. Uh, again, I'm reducing damage, I'm empowering my skeleton swing and we're gonna kill him. With that, we're gonna win this game uh, and I'm gonna pause it before the victory screen appears. Um, just to have a last look at stats and everything. So, um, looking at this, I fell back quite a bit in the end game. Uh, Grayman has great wave clear uh, later on, uh, especially with the cocktail build that is done. Um, he also has a Hunter Spunder bus, which allows him to uh, clear waves pretty well. Um, he did a great job. Um, on my side, still uh, quite a bit of hero damage, um, close to the Sonya, uh, and only Vala and the Sonya uh, were doing more damage than our damage dealers, so that's pretty good. Um, the Diablo, uh, nearly 15,000 uh, behind us, so it looks really good. That being said, I had most XP soaked, um, and this is really important. Um, we're now up in XP again, but throughout the game at the beginning, um, we were winning because we were up uh, in XP. Uh, we're doing a good job um, in fi uh, fighting the right fights with the talents up and everything. So yeah, um, that's Leoric. Again, that's the build that we're going uh, with in this situation. Um, consume Vitality, just to have more heal from the Q. Um, and then also have the reduced cooldown, uh, which is always good. You have 12 seconds instead of 14 seconds. Excellent um, for your early game. Neil Peasants to do uh, more wave clear, uh, do more damage to minions and bosses uh, and everything. Again, especially the Tomb of Spider Green is extremely good, but also you can see this working very well on, on Inferno Shrines. Uh, hopelessness for the drain uh, increase uh, range. Uh, helps you to stay in the fight, uh, also helps you to bully people out because they can't stay in range and they actually have to run away further than they want to, even further um, than they might get XP. Really good. Uh, March of the Black King, uh, the go-to pick at the moment. Again, if you have uh, good targets, um, you can also pick Entomb. In this situation, um, Sonya wants to be with, uh, wants to be in the room with you. Um, Diablo can actually um, uh, like charge out. Vala has Vault. Um, Lucio can, I think, skate on the walls. I'm not 100% certain, but I don't think he's um, a prime target for um, for the tomb. The only person would be Medic, um, but I don't think that she uh, alone is um, the pick that um, or the, the hero that makes the, the tomb better. March was very good. Um, got a lot of uh, combos up. Again, Tomb of the Spider Queen. A lot of times you uh, clump up or the enemy clump up and you can hit a couple of or fears of it. And then Ominous, Ominous Wrath and uh, Royal Focus, both of them are game-changing talents. Um, you uh, reduce the damage and then you have it up nearly every time. Um, so each enemy that is hit with uh, Skeletal Screen um, reduces by 7 seconds, so it has 14 seconds. If you hit two heroes, you have it up right away. Um, so this is really incredible, incredibly strong. It only costs 50 mana, so um, late game you have it up all the time and you can use it a lot. Um, again, Spectral Leech, I think in this t in this case it wasn't the best uh, choice. Diablo has quite a bit of uh, maximum health, so it was kind of working for that. But as you've seen in the in the wraith walks, I didn't actually do that much uh, auto attacks. That's it for me. Uh, we're gonna win this game now. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, and again, uh, I think I'm gonna do more videos again now for the foreseeable future, especially. Um, with the changes that are coming to Heroes. I'm very excited to see that. And I hope that you like the new format with the hot stocks and everything in the beginning. Uh, let me know what you think. Also let me know what the camera zoom uh, you prefer. I think with the talent bar on top, um, the normal vision um, doesn't work that well. But uh, you can let me know. And as always, thank you for watching uh, and have a good day. Bye-bye.